Well, we're going to change now from the law of sines to the law of cosines, as you see. Uh, and you can read, but I'll read to you, of course. Uh, to, to use the law of sines, you must know at least one side and its opposite angle. That's what we discussed over and over. You have to have three pieces of information to use the law of sines, but uh, what you have to have in combination is a side and, and an angle opposite or an angle and a side opposite it. Um, and the other two possibilities are the sine side, a side side side. When you when you find when you uh, have three sides, then you have to use the law of cosines to to resolve the triangle. That is to find the three angles. Uh, and then there's the uh, side angle side SAS, and that's really two sides and the included angle between them. And so in that case, you actually have information about three of the ratios in the law of sines. Uh, you, you have two sides, like uh, A and a C, and you have an angle, a B, angle B, and you see that you can't use the law of signs because you don't have enough information in the appropriate places, uh, as it says below. Okay, so uh, law of signs doesn't work in either one of these cases. Um, and so enter the law of cosines. In the law of cosines, there's actually three different forms of it, but it's set up that you're trying to find a side when you know two sides and the angle between the two sides okay so in this case if you wanted if you knew the angle a and you knew side you knew sides b and c then this is the form that you would use if you knew angle b and you wanted to find side b and you know sides a and c then this is the form you would use and so on now you can actually take any one of these i've taken the first one here and solved it for cosine of A. So if I was actually looking for A, the angle A, and I knew the three sides, then I could use this form. But I, this is a little much for me to remember or memorize. I can derive it. If I knew three sides, I'd just put, plug them in, and then I would find uh, cosine A and then solve for A beyond that. So this is what the law of cosines looks like. And this is another one that you need to get to uh, uh, memorized, if you will, and remember that there's actually three different forms of it depending on the information you have. Well, let's uh, let's look at a problem. Okay, here we're to uh, it, it's telling us this, but of course, in real uh, applications, we won't know, <clears throat> we won't be given directions. Pardon me. Generally, the problem won't tell us what particular uh, law to use, um, but uh, we're kind of given that information here in the very beginning. Um, we're given a triangle, you see, where uh, we know one angle, and uh, that la angle is labeled A, and it's 115 degrees, uh, and we know two sides, and the side we see here, 10 centimeters, is opposite side C, uh, excuse me, angle C, so this is side C. And the side we see here, 15 centimeters, is opposite angle B. Okay, so this is side B. Now, one of the things that we'll notice right away <coughs> is that, uh, well, let, let's look at the information we have. We know angle A, we know side B, and we know side C. So what do we need to find? We need to find side A, angle B, and angle C. Those are the pieces of information we need to find. And, and as I was describing on the previous page, when we have side angle side like this, when we have uh, two sides in the included angle, the law of sines won't work because, for instance, here we know angle A, and we know side B, and we know side C, but we can't take any one of those pairs of ratios uh, and and solve for the one unknown because if we use these two we don't know angle b or angle c so this is useless if we use these two we don't know uh, side a or angle b we just know the pieces of information here so we can't solve for either one of them and it just continues that way so we have to use the law of cosines here that's kind of the way things go um, <clears throat> and of course what we know is Angle A, side B, side C. We know angle A, side B, side C. So from this law, this version of law of cosines, we'll be able to find the side A. 
<clears throat> so that's what we work on first, let's find side A. And so we uh, are using this version of the law of cosines. And of course, we substitute our values for B, which is 15, and C, which is 10. And then, of course, in this position, B and C again, 15 and 10. And of course, angle A, 115 degrees. Now, <laughs> as we do our calculations, I, uh, you know, I just roughed it out, and you maybe want to be a more, little more careful. <clears throat> I rounded to tenths here. Okay, uh, the other the other two uh, uh, sides are given in terms of uh, uh, whole numbers, whole units, uh, single units, digits, and here I went ahead and went to. Uh, uh, now, because I'm not finished, of course, I need to actually find A. This is A squared. And so uh, that's what I did on the next page. Uh, excuse me, on the next line. I took the square root of uh, 451.8. And the truth is, I would do this all at once. I'd actually say A is the square root of this long expression. I'd say A is the square root of B squared plus C squared minus 2BC times cosine A, rather than do these in parts. Uh, but, you know, I guess we could do that right here, see what we get. So we'll start with square root, and then we put b squared, well that's 15 squared, uh, plus, of course, 10 squared, which we know is 100, but we'll just say 10 squared, minus 2 times b, which is 15, times C, which is 10, times the cosine, and make sure your uh, calculator is in degree mode, but I know mine is, 115 degrees, close the cosine, and then close the square root. And you see that this will do it all at once, and we get 21.255 and so on, and I rounded that to 21.3. Okay, well, what, what next? Let's see, what next? Well, here's where we are. Whoops, I got ahead of myself. Here's where we are. We know, we know uh, angle A, side B, side C, those were given. Now we know side A. So we need to find angle B or angle C. Now, we could, and there's not anything wrong with this, we could, Take the information that we've got now, okay, and say, oh, we want to find angle B in the law of cosines. We want to find angle B. Well, what do we know, need to know to find angle B? We need to know side B, which was given. We need to know side A, which we have now. Okay, we need to know side C, which was given, and then we could find uh, angle B. We could find the cosine of B and solve for it, and that would work. There's just multiple calculations, and we'd have to uh, do quite a bit of work to solve for cosine of B. Now, we could instead use the law of sines at this point. We had to use the law of cosines to get A, but we could use the law of sines now, and, and because there would be fewer calculations. We notice here, look at, look at this version, the, uh, the reciprocal version of the law of sines. We, we know angle A. We now know side A. We know side B that was given. And so we could solve for sine of angle B, and it would be pretty easy. Okay, so let's approach it that way. That's what I've, been, that's what I've said here. We could, we could finish the problem, uh, and for both C, B and C, we could use the law of sines. We're going to first use the law of sines to calculate uh, angle B. So we have sine of B is equal to b times this fraction, okay? That's what I've shown here. It's this denominator b times this fraction, sine of a over a. And so we have the information to put in. b is 15, angle a is 115 degrees, and side a I'm using as 21.3. And so sine of b ends up being approximately 0.63824. Well then, what is uh, 
what is uh, angle B? Well, angle B then is the inverse sine of this number, which ends up being approximately 39.7 degrees. And whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, let, let, me, let me make a point here. In, in what we did at the end of dealing with the law of sines, when we had to calculate an angle using the law of sines, um, th that's when we didn't know. What was that called? What did we call that? Well, I'm sure you remember that we called that the ambiguous case. And the ambiguous case is when we use the law of sines to calculate an angle because <laughs> with that, with, with, we could have a single solution, two solutions, or no solution. Now, why don't I worry about the, the this being an ambiguous case here? Because I used to remember the idea is that there's actually two angles between zero and 180 degrees whose sign is 0.68 to uh, 63824. The second angle would be 180 degrees minus 39.7 degrees, uh, whatever that is. Let's see, 140. Point three, I believe that's 140.3 degrees, whose sine is also the same. So how, why do I not have to worry about that other angle? Well, here's the reason. Let's go way back up here to the top. Angle A is 115 degrees, okay? And so, and a triangle can only have one obtuse angle. There cannot be another angle more than 90 degrees. Otherwise, it would be at more than 180 degrees. So that's the reason we know, ah, we didn't pay attention to that previously, that's the reason we know that B can't be over 90 degrees. 39.7 degrees has to be correct. So in this case, because of the extra information, we don't have an ambiguous situation. Well, now that we know angle B and we know angle A as a given, then angle C is 180 degrees minus the other two angles which ends up being 25.3 degrees. And so now we know, and I'm sorry I didn't fill this in, B is 39.7 degrees and C is 25.3 degrees. So we have completed the solution to this equation using the law of cosines. Okay, well, let's look at a second problem. And in this second problem, we're given uh, the length of three sides so this is a side, side, side uh, situation, and we're to resolve, uh, solve the triangle, which uh, that's not stated here, but uh, we need to find angle A, angle B, angle C. And you see that the angle, I mean, side A is 8 feet, side B is 19 feet, side C is 14 feet. So I've just summarized the information we have here and we're to find the three angles given the three sides. And uh, this is another case where the law of sines won't work. Okay, law of sines won't work uh, because we would have uh, uh, only one piece of each fraction known and so we couldn't put two fractions together and solve for a, a missing unknown. We would have two unknowns no matter what two fractions we used what two ratios. <clears throat> now this makes a statement, okay, so we, we know that we're going to use the law of cosines and of course the law of cosines will work because we know uh, side A, side B, side C and so we know everything in this first equation except uh, angle A and likewise we could use the second equation we just wouldn't know angle B and so on. So we can decide which one of the angles we want to find first and so we could go about finding A first, but that's not what we do. Let me explain. It says here, first find the angle opposite the longest side. Why would we do that? Well, here's why. Okay. If the longest side is B, that means the biggest angle has to be angle B. Okay. So once we know angle B, it's the largest angle. When we go about it, when we go about later on finding angle uh, the other two angles A and C, we could use the law of sines. And when we know, use the law of sines, we wouldn't have to worry. Wouldn't to worry. Well, now when we calculate 
a using um, the inverse sine function do we need to worry about two possible solutions and the answer would always be no if we already know the largest angle if the largest angle is obtuse then a and C would have to be acute, so there's not two different options. If the longest, if the biggest angle is acute, the other angles still have to be smaller, so they have to be acute. So there's no, there's no uh, issue about do we have two possible solutions for A or for C. So that's the reason we worry about uh, finding the biggest angle, and that's the angle opposite the longest side. And so that's what we'll do. We'll calculate using this second equation. We want to find angle B since we've decided it's the longest side. And so it's just a matter of putting the values in. Uh, side B is 19, so I have 19 squared equals side A is 8, so I have 8 squared plus 14 squared since 14 is side uh, C. And then take this information and solve for B. That's, that's all that's being done here. Okay. Now, by the way, just as an observation, because the cosine of B is negative, we know that B is an obtuse angle, because that means the angle B has to be in the second quadrant, doesn't it? Okay. I mean, it's got to be between 0 and 180 degrees, and if the cosine of it's negative, it's going to be in the second quadrant, which is between 90 and 180 degrees. So we have that information uh, all, already given to us, don't we? Or, or we can figure it out. And so we use the inverse cosine function to find B, inverse cosine of this value, and that's 116.8 degrees approximately. So B is an obtuse angle. Uh, A and C then have to be acute angles. So here's our information at this point. We were given the sides, here are the sides, now we know angle B, and so all we have to do is find angle A and C. Now, again, we could come back up here, say we want to know A, angle A, and so we could, we could calculate angle A by using all of this information, and it would work fine. There's no problem. I'm a little bit... Uh, uh, maybe lazy is not the right word, but I want to uh, limit the amount of calculations I have to make. So I'm going to, um, on this just a restatement of what I already said, uh, because we know B is obtuse, A and C are acute, and if we found B, the largest was acute, we know A and C are also acute. So finding B was the best thing to do. But at this point now, I can change to the law of signs Okay, I could use either one of these equations to find angle A or angle C, but it's more efficient to use the law of sines because using the law of sines, there are just four entities, four pieces that are needed. So if I want to know if I want to know angle A, and I know side A, and I know angle B, and I know side B, then I would use this form of the law of sines to calculate the sine of A. The sine of A is A times the fraction sine of B over B. And so we put the value of A in. Angle B we calculated is 116.8 degrees. And side B is 19. So the sine of angle A is 0.37582. And the inverse sine then would calculate A. We don't need to worry about a, a matching obtuse angle because we know A is acute. So we have A is 22.1 degrees by using the inverse sine function. Whoops. Well, got some stuff there. Now, for angle C is simple because we know the other two angles. So angle C is 180 degrees minus angle A minus angle B, which is 41.1 degrees when we calculate it. So now we have the completed package. We have everything we need, uh, but we start out using the law of cosines. And it's, we could have used the law of cosines all the way through, but it was just simpler calculations, fewer pieces of information necessary uh, to complete the problem when we switched to the law of sines using information we knew before so we didn't have to worry about two different solutions for angle A. 
Well, let's um, let's look at one more situation here on uh, for uh, problem number uh, number three in our examples. I believe the next uh, sample is also um, about uh, resolving a triangle when we know three sides. Yes, uh, find the angles of the triangle with the sides of uh, side A is 3, side B is 4, side C is 10. And so uh, we just finished with this, so we understand, uh, with something like this, we understand uh, that we're going to use the law of cosines. And we also understand that uh, it's to our advantage to find the angle opposite the largest side because that will be the largest angle and we can draw conclusions from there. So we'll first find angle C. And to find angle C then we use this third version of the law of cosines down here. And we enter our information. So side C is 10, side A is 3, side B is 4, side A is 3, side B is 4. So we have 100 is equal to, uh, and this is 9 plus 16 or, or 25, minus 2 times 3 times 4 times cosine C. And that ends up being minus 24 times cosine C. So I, I uh, subtracted 25 on both sides and have 75 is equal to negative 24 cosine C. And so cosine C is negative 75 over 24. And so now we're going to calculate C using the inverse cosine function. We're going to find the inverse cosine of negative 75 over 24. So I get out my calculator. Inverse cosine, so that's the second cosine key. Negative, okay, and if I'm putting in a negative, it's not the subtraction, it's down here, of course, negative, and the fraction, 75 over 24. 75 divided by 24. and enter. Oh, we got a do an error. And it's telling us that's a domain error. Okay, a domain error. Well, a domain error means that we have an invalid number in here for the inverse cosine. And maybe we remember that we can only take the inverse cosine of things between negative 1 and positive 1. But, but let's back up even further. 75 over 24 is actually more than 3, isn't it? So here we have the cosine of C is negative 3 something. And, and maybe we would have noticed this, maybe not. We see that error and it means that we need to look at things. And with that, that error is getting us to reflect here, the cosine of an angle can't ever be negative 3. It has to always be between negative 1 and positive 1. So that means there's no angle C where this can happen, which means there's no triangle. There's no triangle that can have these three sides. Well, let's investigate that a little further, because if we would have analyzed this in the very beginning, we could have made that decision. And here's basically what we have. We have one side, uh, side C is 10 units long. We have a side A that's three units long and a side B that's four units long. Look at that. We, we can't make a triangle out of that. They don't reach far enough. And the issue is that these other two sides are less than the, the some of these other two sides is less than the length of the long side. No triangle can be formed with those sides. In fact, in any triangle, the sum of the length of any two sides must be greater than the length of the remaining side, remaining side, okay? And so that's what we could have told in advance. 3 plus 4 is not bigger than 10, so there can't be a triangle uh, made of these three sides. Three, we would have to have a side less than 7 to be able to have a triangle. Well, it, it kind of shows us we have to always be on our toes, don't we? Now, I haven't uh, shown any examples here involving applications of using the law of cosines. But as long as we know how to use the law of cosines, then those applications uh, we can provide kind of on our own and, and, and work through them when we see them. So uh, good luck to you on your homework. I hope this is uh, beneficial.